Welcome back to the channel and in this episode this is one of the little bonus this is one of the bonus videos that I'm going to add to this series and uh, try and cover some of the history behind the actual vehicle that's the focus of our model build and, and this time it's covering the Panzerkampfwagen 2 Alfs F. So these are some pictures that I've taken from the Tank Museum at Bovington in uh, southwest England. Uh, I'm just going to cover a bit of the history now surrounding this vehicle. So the Panzerkampfwagen 2 Alfs F was the last standard version of the Panzer II light tank. At the point it was introduced, the Panzer II light tank had been removed from a combat role with Panzer units and was instead being used more in a reconnaissance role. This suited the F variant well, as it was lightly armoured and had a small calibre gun, compared to the enemy tanks it would face. It was superseded in the combat role by the Panzer III and the Panzer IV. The F variant of the Panzer II saw changes to the superstructure front, which was made from a single piece armour plate with a redesigned visor. A dummy visor was also placed next to this visor uh, to deflect and confuse the enemy and to deflect any rounds to that dummy visor which was part of the armoured plate. The hull was redesigned with a flat 35mm plate on its front. The superstructure and turret armour was built up to 30mm on the front with 15mm on the sides and rear. There was some minor alteration of the suspension and a new commander's cupola was added which had periscopes fitted allowing for a better 360 degree field of view. 524 Panzer II F tanks were built from March 1941 to December 1942 as the final major tank version of the Panzer II series. The tank was armed with a 2cm KWK-30 L55 gun and a 7.92mm MG34 machine gun, both situated in the turret and moved together. The F variant was mainly used on the Eastern Front as a reconnaissance tank, but some Panzer II Fs were sent to North Africa as well. The paint schemes of this variant would have been overall Dunkelgrau, RAL7021, or German Panzer Grey, or the Troppen scheme of Gelbron, RAL 8000, which is a yellow-brown, uh, with RAL 7008, which is a grey-green, added as a two-tone camouflage scheme. This is the sort of scheme that you see on the Tiger 1 at Bovington and similar vehicles of that time period. This tropping scheme could also have been used on the Eastern Front. Some vehicles may have been repainted in Dunkelgelb as well, which is RAL 7028, or dark yellow. Some of these Panzer II F vehicles were still seeing action in the mid to late 1943 and beyond, with a good number of vehicles being deployed at the Battle of Kursk. Now, the subject in the photos has been repainted by the Tank Museum at Bovington, and it's painted in the early war scheme of Dunkel Brown NR45, which is the dark brown, and Dunkel Grau NR46, which is the dark grey. And this has been painted to be part of their Blitzkrieg display because they don't have any other Panzer II, so that's how they've wanted to display it. Uh, this is inaccurate, and um, the F variant would never have been painted in this scheme. Uh, but it is interesting because I've taken some close-up pictures, and you can see where the crosses have been left, that the Trop and Scheme colours are showing through, so you can see the RAL 8000 yellow-brown showing through there. Um, and it gives a good idea of uh, that gel brown colour, which is the yellow brown. Now we'll just finish off with a few specifications for the Panzer II Alps F. The tank measured 4.75 metres long, 2.28 metres wide and 2.15 metres high. It weighed 9.5 tonnes, had a crew of three. For the armament, it had a single 2cm KWK-30 L55 autocannon in the turret with a 7.92mm coaxial MG-34 machine gun alongside it. The armour thickness ranged from 5mm up to 30mm and it was powered by a Maybach HL62 TR six-cylinder water-cooled 140 horsepower gasoline petrol engine and with a top speed of around 40 kilometers per hour or 25 miles per hour. 
So thanks to everyone who's uh, watched this video. And um, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you like what you see, uh, follow along on the rest of the videos. We've got this attached in a playlist where we're actually building some models alongside this and trying to cover the basics of armor modeling. Hope this was of interest and uh, it should be part of a series that's going to be coming uh, down the line. Uh, if you want to support the channel, there's a few links below where you can do that. Let me know any thoughts in the comments below. If you like the video, please consider giving it a like because it really helps with the video being seen. I'll see you in the next video.